Eu poderia parar o tempo Só para ver você Neste momento preciso saber Porque estamos muito longe Podemos ficar Hey guys, this is Robert. Welcome back to our channel. Um, so this is going to be my second tutorial and I can say that this tutorial was uh, actually done by request. I am a member on Facebook group of PreSonu Studio One and I have received a couple, couple messages if I can do some covering on basics in PreSonu Studio One. So. This is for you guys and for any newcomers or any newbies. I'm gonna try to cover, let's say, the very basics of kind of everything. But uh, there is much more things in PreSonu Studio One. I'm not gonna go into crazy details, but I think I'm gonna help you to get started if you never worked with PreSonu Studio One before or if you're just starting out and you're still um, kind of lost so uh, here we go I'm not gonna talk anymore about anything else let's just jump right into it so the first thing I want to show you once you open PreSonus Studio One uh, one of the first important thing is which is right over here the setup um, that's where you set up actually your audio interface or your sound card so as you can see, if I'm going with my mouse just in the middle, it becomes active. So I just click on it once with the, with the left button on the mouse and I get this window, which is options. Now, there's a couple, couple tabs up here with pictures, a couple uh, smaller tabs just underneath. Um, you have some general settings over here which is like a language and uh, when Studio One starts what you want to do with that it's, you don't really have to worry about it unless you want to change the language now the appearance of course you can set it up by by your likes like if you want to add some saturation, illumination, contrast, whatever so you can do it however you like I, I personally leave it as it is just by default now something quite interesting I never used it myself but if you are one of those guys who want to have your own keywords or basically shortcuts you can actually create them over here so as you can see you got a couple windows if you see for example options this is just an example you click on it it'll tell you what's the shortcut right over here but you can also select your own shortcut unless it's not taken by any other options so it's quite useful if you have your own kind of shortcuts in mind and you want to change them you can do it right over here in this tab it's called keyboard shortcuts and uh, network which is allow remote control apps to discover this door um, you can have a check or uncheck uh, just leave it as it is as it was in the beginning now there is uh, another tab up here if I click on it it says locations now so user data will be in this folder uh, you can browse by clicking on this little on this little icon right next to it then file types uh, you don't have to mess with that sound sets that's those sound sets from PreSonus if you have them downloaded that will be the location where you're installing them to as it states right over here so it's pretty pretty self-explanatory now instruments library it's the same thing from PreSonus if you have them extra that will be the location and the very most important tab over here in locations would be your VST plugins which is the last tab right over here this one now this is something what you have to have in mind if you have any third-party plugins and you have installed them once you have your studio run running studio one then you are actually adding in here your locations of the third-party plugins so remember if you install I don't know let's say you got the waves plugins uh, and you install them in your computer then you open PreSonus Studio One and you open a new project and you're looking for your effects it's not going to be there by default you have to add the location so uh, usually 
I think if I remember well, I'm not sure right now, but I think if you open it for the first time, there should be a program files VST plugins, which will be by default, but you can add other ones. As you can see, I have, for example, a uh, folder H where I got VST 64 plugins, 64 bits. And then I have a 32 bits uh, under VST32. So this is my own locations, my own folders. Now you can have it under whatever letter, whatever folder you set up on your computer. But again, if you install the third party plugins for the first time uh, after you install Studio One, you do have to add those locations if you don't have them by default in program files. Otherwise, the plugins won't appear once you open your project. So this is how it's done. If you click on add, that's how you adding new uh, location. And then just selecting folders where you have the plugins saved. And once you have, once you add them over here, then you just click apply and OK. I'm not going to do it now because I have it already set it up. But uh, this is the way how is it done. So remember locations, VST plugins, very important feature in uh, PreSonus Studio One to get you running. Um, next one is your audio setup. So uh, this is where you are going to select your device. As you can see, I'm running my audio interface, Focusrite USB, and it has its own audio driver. So I don't have to use ACO for all. If you're familiar with those low latency drivers, I'm using direct driver from Focusrite. If I click on this icon, as you can see, I do have ACO for all installed in the computer, but I'm not using it as the Focusrite driver has better latency settings. So that's why I'm using my own Focusrite. And of course the samples, you can set them right over here and you can also open control panel. Now, if I click on that, in my case, it's going to open the uh, Focusrite control panel, which comes bundled with my audio interface. But uh, everyone has different interfaces. You may have M audio or whatever interface you have. It may look different. You can have a different window here, or you can simply use RCO for all, where you can set up your uh, buffer. Um, external devices that will be your MIDI controllers, MIDI keyboards. So uh, um, I'm using this one, a new keyboard, which is Alesis. For some reason, it didn't find the uh, drivers by itself, so I added it manually. Uh, if you don't know how to do it, you can drop me a comment. I can explain it in the next video. And then some advanced settings such as editing, automation, audio, MIDI, console and services. Now this is something which you can read through and if you're not sure about anything, again, drop me a comment. I can explain uh, this in more in details. So this pretty much covers that little setup window, which I accessed by just clicking on this middle kind of area here underneath the setup. I hope this helps you and um, in next video we're gonna go and open the project and we're gonna cover some basics there. So again guys if you have uh, any comments please do, do comment on my videos. Uh, contact me directly through Facebook group or, or on YouTube channel ask me anything i will try to help anybody i'm trying to do these uh, tutorials mainly for beginners so anybody who's new with the presonus studio one or anyone who doesn't know how to do anything uh, be my guest i hope this helped you and uh, i'm looking forward to get your comments subscribe on my channel if you like it and i'll see you next time Thank you very much for watching, thank you for your support, take care guys.